There is something I love about football, about soccer, right? There is an allure to it. I've talked about this before, but it is an allure that is primal for me. And that's because it has a really key difference from all the American sports that I grew up watching, right? Whether it be American football, hockey, baseball, basketball, whatever. All of those sports have one, well, they have a few things in common, right? They, they have one definite thing in common a marriage to the concept of reviews, right? And a marriage to adhering to the rule book exactly as it is written. I'm talking about looking at a player, whether they're out of bounds or inbounds, you're looking at, you know, each last blade of grass, right? Looking at this or that thing, you're trying to determine, you know, what is the letter of the law here? Did he have control of the ball up to this point? What does the book say? How are we going to enforce it? You know, in basketball, if a team is winning by 25 and the ball lands out of bounds with half a second left, the officials will go to the monitor to review to see whether there's a second or half a second left, even though it doesn't matter for the end of the game at all. It, you just want the game to end. The game is clearly already over. Both teams have already conceded. They will go and review a play with one second left because you have to adhere exactly to the rules. Then that's just the way that American sports work. And then there was football. Then there was soccer, right? And I discovered it and I realized that when these guys are taking throw-ins, they don't have to take it from the exact spot that the ball went out. When you take a free kick, particularly not near the edge of the box, you know, the point is to maintain the integrity and the flow of the game. The point is to, to, to put the ball down, kick it, let's get the game going, whatever. Like, the, you know, the, the, the flow of the game is what's most important. What logically makes sense is what is most important, right? You know, the idea of you know, a player gets injured and they're off on the side and the referee decides, like, at what point in the flow of the game to kind of bring that player back in that doesn't provide an advantage. There's a ton of examples of how the referee in particular allows the rules to be broken. They, essentially, that's what's happening. Allows the rules to be broken in order to keep the integrity of the game intact, in order to keep the game flowing, in order to adhere to something that I will refer to, like in the abstract, right? Like I'm Plato or Aristotle, like the spirit of the game, right? Like you have ethos in the spirit of the game. Like that, that, that is just a thing to me. It is alive. It is what the right and wrong thing to do. And, there, and this whole concept has come under threat. And it scares me. It's the American, and I'm using this phrase specifically because if you're not American, this phrase will really scare you. The Americanization of football or, or soccer, right? This introduction of VAR, which I like VAR. VAR cuts down on those stupid red cards that happen when somebody pretends they got hit in the face, but they obviously didn't, right? When there's an obvious handball or an obvious foul on the box that the ref happens to miss, they're particularly wild or confusing play, or a really obvious offside that referees have missed. All of that stuff has been eliminated to the game, eliminated from the game by VAR. That is all a good, th you know, goal line technology is obviously also in that pile. Like all of that stuff is great. But what VAR has also introduced is the ability for the first time to focus on adhering to the kind of exact letter of the law of the game. Like, okay, he's offside by a centimeter. Instead of just being like, oh, that was really tight. We're just going to let that go, which every assistant referee that ever existed before the introduction of VAR definitely did stuff like that all the time, right? And, and adhering to the exact rule of law, like, on a, is this a handball or is this not a handball? And then clearly a lot of different people involved in officiating have different interpretations, like there's some sort of legal court of what the actual rules of the game are. Now this, this is dangerous. And what it also opens itself up to is a phenomena that has also occurred in American sports that we're talking about today. And that phenomena is understanding the rules of the game and manipulating them in bad faith, to get a desired result. Now, this used to happen in the NBA. If you don't watch basketball, basically there was this player named James Harden, right? And he had this ability to draw fouls. He created this new strategy for drawing fouls in the game that was not fun to watch, but according to the actual rules of the game, it is a foul. Basically, what he would do is in basketball, if you get hit in the arm while you're shooting, it's a foul. And he would wait until the defender put their hand in front of him, which they do all the time in basketball. And then let's pretend this mic stand is the dude's arm. He would be holding the ball here 
and in a very quick motion, he would try to shoot through their, through their arm, which is technically a foul on the defense. But that's not the spirit of the game. It's not the spirit of the rule of the foul. And eventually, what the NBA did, what basketball did, was legislated that out of the game. You cannot create a foul based off where the defender's position is. Now, they, they literally went in and changed the rule. And what we're talking about today is I want the exact same thing to happen. That might make me old. I'm not that old, but I, I, I'm, I'm feeling very, you know, get off my lawn right now because I am acknowledging that Anthony Gordon, which is the player that's involved in this incident multiple times, is not doing anything wrong. He's a good player. He, he is somebody that understands the rules of the game and has, has come up with a new and creative way to draw his team penalties. But in the same way that James Harden's stupid shot foul drawing move was just not in the spirit of the game and it sucked to watch, this is not in the spirit of the game and it sucks to watch. So what is it? Uh, so I've got multiple examples for you. It happened today, but what we're going to watch just to prove to you that this is like something Anthony Gordon has mastered and has done multiple times this season this is from uh, September of last year. And what we're watching is Anthony Gordon right here. Okay, and what Anthony Gordon is going to do is he is going to apply pressure to this defender, okay? And then this defender tries to pass it back to the goalkeeper who's going to go for a clearance. And Anthony Gordon is not going to try to go to the ball. He's not even trying to make a touch on the ball. He's not trying to go for the ball. He's not trying to do anything productive for the game. All he's trying to do is get himself in between the player clearing the ball and the actual ball. That's all he's trying to do. So you'll watch it happen. And this is a penalty. I don't disagree with the fact that in the letter of the law, that right there is a penalty. But when you watch this from the multiple angles that we have, you can see Anthony Gordon's goal, specifically because he has a chance to touch the ball here. You see him have a chance to touch the ball, and he doesn't do it. In fact, you will watch right here, as he pulls his foot up short to not try to touch the ball, and then as the goalkeeper pulls out of the challenge, he's not, he realizes Anthony Gordon has just thrown himself into this position. He pulls out of the challenge, and Anthony Gordon just throws himself into the goalkeeper's knee. Right? I mean, look, Anthony Gordon can totally get to this ball. He can play it back to his fullback. He can play it back, you know, just get it out for a throw, whatever. But he is not trying to do that. It is opportunistic. It is very clever. It wins his team penalties. He throws himself in front of the player attempting to clear the ball, who literally pulls out of the play. There's no chance of anything productive happening in the game here. But Anthony Gordon has found a way to draw a penalty. That brings us to today, right? Which, to me, was an even more egregious example. So if you're watching that first one and you're like, ah, eh, the one today is an even more egregious example. And these are not even the only two times Anthony Gordon has done it this season. And it can't be clear enough. I respect the hell out of Anthony Gordon for doing it. I think he's a good player separate of this. This is the rule of the game. If you can get your team penalties by focusing on being able to do, like finding somebody trying to clear the ball and stepping in front, do that. Do it. It's the people running the game, the referee and the people that are enfor like creating and enforcing the rules that need to do something to try and get this out of the game because the rules are just being manipulated. Right, and if I was a Newcastle fan, I'd freaking love that he was doing it. I know I wouldn't want them to change the rule, but I'm not, and I I just want to enjoy a sport where you know the penalty kick, which is like the single biggest decision, most important decision, eighty percent of the time it's a goal, can't be manipulated the way that it's being manipulated right now. But the play was in West Ham, Newcastle. Right, West Ham's up three one. This play ended up sparking a three goal turnaround in the last sixteen minutes for Newcastle to win four to three. So this was an incredibly incredibly important play, right? And, it, and it, it falls, of course, to Calvin Phillips. Now, this is the position right here. Calvin Phillips has the ball. Anthony Gordon's behind him. He knows what he's going to do here. And it is painfully obvious how he does it. So this is what the play looks like in real time on TV. And you can't really see anything. What you need is the replay. And that's what we get here. So we have Anthony Gordon, who comes from a position behind Calvin Phillips. Calvin Phillips obviously has no idea he's there. That shouldn't have too much of a factor in on this. But Anthony Gordon is never trying to play the ball here. Anthony Gordon is trying to get kicked because he knows if he gets kicked, VAR will look at it, and there's no way if VAR looks at a dude getting kicked in the box that they can't call it. They, they have to call it a penalty. 
That's the rule of the game, the letter of the law, the way it's written. And we are losing that whole spirit of the game thing where you can just go, ah, dude, he's not even trying to make a play on the ball here. He's just trying to draw a foul, get up, whatever. You can't do that anymore, right? Because the letter of the law, and now we're reviewing it, you have to make this call. Anthony Gordon is wraps his leg around Calvin Phillips as he winds up to clear this ball. And he's not even trying to play the ball. In fact, he is so determined to not play the ball here that he, he literally gives him a hug. Look at the direction his foot is facing relative to Calvin Phillips trying to clear the ball. He just wraps his body around Calvin Phillips to get between him and the clearance. That's not the point of any of this. We're going to reward, like this is creative and a great use of the rule, and I cannot say that enough, but we should not be rewarding this, right? Like, and this could just be my old man take of the day. Uh, you guys could want this to be the way that the game is played now, where you're able to like use your foxy, uh, like your fox kind of devious creativity to get around the box and make plays, swipe or no swiping sort of nonsense, right? Dora the Explorer absolutely malding. That, if that's what you want to be happening, I just don't. I just want a penalty to be somebody is getting into a dangerous area and gets fouled. Somebody's carrying the ball in the box and gets fouled, right? Those should, those are penalties. This is neither of those things. This is a dude desperately trying to get himself kicked in the box. And he does. I don't blame Calvin Phillips for this at all. I mean, this is kind of absurd. Like he's, yeah, like it, somebody should warn him that Anthony Gordon's coming up from behind, but Anthony Gordon's not trying to take the ball. He actually could. You see him turn his foot right there. If he wanted to, he could try and poke the ball to this guy right at the edge of the box. And that would be, that would be a productive play and a really impressive play. But no, he just wraps his body around Calvin Phillips, gets kicked, and then goes down like he got shot by a sniper, right? It, 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 this is somehow VAR in the introduction of this adherence to the letter of the law. I mean, look at this angle. Goodness gracious, look at this angle. He could totally try and get the ball. He's not trying to get the ball. You see him pull his body back towards Calvin Phillips here. He's not trying to get the ball. He's trying to get kicked. That's all he's trying to do is get kicked in this situation. And he's very good at getting kicked, right? And, and he it, it is a, until somebody lays it out that you cannot do this, until somebody logically looks at it and goes, we don't want this to be a part of our game. You can't do this. People will continue to do this. And you know what? More players will learn how to do it. Because if I was a Premier League winger, I'd be looking at this situation goes and going, wow, I really need, when I'm in the box, I need to focus on when a player is about to clear it, I need to try and throw myself in the way of that clearance because I can win my team penalties. I mean, this is the same sort of like the reason you have to call handballs when defenders are going, you know, when they block a cross like this, is because if you allowed that to be, you know, an accidental handball, then every defender in the world would just make themselves bigger and come up to the edge of the box like this just to take away crossing angles, and then it's an accidental handball because they didn't have time to handle it, right? So that makes defenders have to put their hands behind their back. Well, in this case, offensive players should not be encouraged to do this. But right now, the way the rules are written and everything, they're encouraged to do this. I hope somebody changes it, right, because it, it's just not – the spirit of the game. I don't think this is the point of the sport. I think penalties, like I just said, penalties should be given when a player is working their way into a threatening area and gets fouled. And when a player is carrying the ball into a threat, like they're carrying the ball in the box and they get fouled in a way that like inhibits them from being able to continue. That's what should be a penalty. This, this, if I am king of all things, ruler of the world, I'm banning this tomorrow. Right. And I'd love to hear your thoughts right in the comments about what the best way to do that is, because I'm sure just me, a dude in a chair, probably is not going to be able to think of the absolute best way to handle this. But even though I agree with the ref and the VAR and think Anthony Gordon's making the right play, like, th like this is a foul. He drew the foul. Yes, we need to hand we need to be able to differentiate here. And the, uh, in my solution, I, I know I just asked for your solution is. I think the referees who are in charge of so much in the game, right? People are afraid of giving referees too much power. They have all of the power, okay? Like I just was talking about the throw-ins and the free kicks and everything. The flow of the game and the understanding of the spirit of the game, right, is enforced by the referees. They literally tell you when the game ends already, right? Which has clearly been a big controversy in La Liga, right? With the whole Real Madrid, Jude Bellingham scoring and then getting a red card because they blew the whistle right before, right? The referees already have that power. They have the ultimate power. 
And there needs to be some sort of allowance like they're trying to introduce with offside here where you can make a judgment call on this. And like, he's not, play, he's not trying to play the ball. He's just trying to get in the way of the clearance and get kicked, right? And, and play on instead of rewarding that behavior with a penalty. Maybe this is wishful thinking. Maybe the game's already gone. Am I old enough to be saying game's gone yet? Game's gone. <sighs> oh. Hope you guys have a good weekend, though.